Hello, today's Bible study comes from the book of John, the second chapter, the first through the twelfth verse, and reads as, reads as follows. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs, through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples, there they stayed for a few days. So, John the Baptist, as we start in this chapter, had been following Jesus, been with Jesus for three days. And he speaks to the third day of Jesus and the disciples being invited to a wedding at Cana in Galilee. And Jesus' mother Mary was there. And this was not an unusual thing to be invited to weddings. It was a big ceremony. And Jesus didn't stop a good time or anything like that when it it came to doing good. Jesus enhanced doing good things, and a wedding is a good thing. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding, so they were with him. And when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. And this was a big thing because it would have embarrassed the host not to have wine. It was a Jewish custom. Um, and it was, you know, even if we didn't have enough goods or foods or drinks when we were throwing a festivity, it would be somewhat of an embarrassing thing because we would have to short some people. Um, so when they ran out of wine, it's considered a social mistake. That's all. So they have no wine and we don't know why Mary brought this to Jesus' attention, um, but she did bring it to his attention. And then he said, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? And he says woman because he was speaking to her with a term of respect, but he did not call her mother. And you have to remember that this was the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And when Jesus was ministering, ministering, he called on the Lord for everything before he did anything. And Mary brings it to his attention like he was supposed to do something. But Jesus had to go to the Lord before he was going to do anything. So when he says it, it's not a discourtesy. It was not rude. Jesus was just saying, I think I, I won't do it at this time because I haven't consulted my father in heaven. I haven't given him what he needs. And you can see this quite often. If you look at John 5 and 19, Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. He tells them there. If you look at 5.30, I can of myself do nothing. He says it. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Um, John 8 and 28, he says, Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, 
I speak these things. And then go right to 29, and it says, And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that pleases him. So before Jesus could do this, even though Mary brought it to his attention, he will have to consult the Father. So in this moment or in this time of transformation, I'm sure Jesus prayed and called upon the Lord in order for things to happen. And he was going to take action. And I'm sure Mary was sure of this. But it wasn't her to dictate him to do it. It was for his heavenly father to dictate to him to do it. And that's why when you see it, you'll see that Mary calls at him, but he doesn't call her mom. He says woman, and he doesn't say mother either. He says woman, and it's not to disrespect her, but it's because he is now ministering for the father, and it starts his ministry as a man, and he has to call upon God for all that he does. Everything he does is in the service of the Lord and pleasing to the Lord. In other words, the best relationship is his relationship with the Lord. Then the other relationships come, as he tells us to love him above all. So when he says, my, my hour has not come yet, and, you know, some people think it speaks to his death, which I didn't think it meant that. Um, when he says, then he told them, now draw some, oh, I'm sorry, where was that? Yeah, my hour has not come yet. I think it was, it wasn't time for him to show it yet, show who he was, to let his abilities be shown to the world like that, because one, he had to take the time to call the Lord and call upon him. He had to make sure it was pleasing to the Lord, and then he could do it. So I think that statement there was telling Mary, this is my time to call and pray to the Heavenly Father and make sure that this is pleasing to him. So nearby, um, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, this is something that was big. And I'm in verse 5, excuse me for jumping to 6. This is something that is big because Mary said, do whatever he tells you. Mary was edifying Jesus. This was not about Mary. This was about Jesus. She knew who he was. And this had nothing to do with her. There was nothing that states to go through Mary. And Mary was letting you know. Go through him. Do what he tells you. Don't go to Mary. She is not the mediator. But she is blessed. Please do not get that confused. She was blessed. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing. This was one of their big things, the wash jars. The, these wash jars were used to clean themselves, and they held 20 to 30 gallons of water. Now, in verse 7, and you got to watch this, because Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. So they filled the jars with water, and then they took it to the master of the banquet. So they were obedient. They did what Jesus said. And there's there's that obedience thing. Be obe obedient unto the Lord. Then he told them, draw some out and take it to the master. Here's another obedience thing. Draw some out. But here's something that might slip in the mix of this passage. He said, take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. It never says when Jesus turned the water into wine. So they had to have faith, because if they would have took water to the master, oh, could you imagine how embarrassing, how the master would have felt? 
So Jesus had obedient and faithful followers. And look at the blessing that came by being obedient and faithful. The water was turned to wine. And if you didn't realize this also, this was a spiritual thing. But Jesus was also showing you, I have control over natural because man can take water and make it into wine, but he has to add this and this and take time and let it ferment and all those things. That doesn't have to be that way with Jesus. Jesus just said it is. Have faith and it is. So they walked this over to this master and they gave it. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. And the thing is, he did not realize where it came from because remember, they were out. They knew. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The servants knew they drew water as they were told. They filled it up as they were told. They draw some, took some out as they were told, and they took it to the master as they were told. And with their obedience and faith, the water that they had became wine. So Jesus protected them because we know there could have been some problems if he would have took water to the master at this time. So he protected them too. Then he called the bridegroom aside and he said, everything brings out the choice wine. Everyone brings out the choice wine first. And then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. And he says, but you have saved the best for now. Wow. That is, that's heavy. That's heavy. See, the master of the feast paid the bridegroom a great compliment. Because he could have been scarred and... This would have been a bad social event, running out of wine. But the miracle of Jesus transforming that water into wine made a better, a better wedding party. It made it a better event. And when Jesus made it, it was good wine. It was the best wine. And that doesn't mean that it was this or that. It just meant that the Lord satisfied them abundantly. You know, you can see people trying to make wine, but it doesn't work that way. So he says, you have kept the good wine in, until now. The main thing it's saying is, the pe for the people of God, the best is yet to come. See, we, we walking right now. We have some good times. We have some bad times. We have some suffering. But the best is yet to come, and that will be the kingdom of God. When you are in glory, that will be it. So, Jesus has a lot in this passage. And the Everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have too had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. This was, once again, the beginning of signs in the Gospel of John. John is actually the first gospel in the New Testament. And this is the first of seven miracles of what they call conversion. Um, Jesus was doing what he does. And this beginning of signs, oh man, increased faith. It brought faith in. If you notice what it says, it says, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, revealed his power. And his disciples believed in him even more. And after this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. And there they stayed 
a few more days. Amen.